So I went to my local Walmart and I found ornaments and I really like the red and green. I think it's traditional Christmas and I think it's going to be perfect for creating this hanging ball. So we're going to take the ornament, make sure all of the tops are secured and if they're not you can just come back in with a little bit of hot glue. What we have here is our glue skillet and I'm just going to dip that ornament top into the skillet and that's actually going to secure it even more so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just poke it right into the ornament. So as you can see, it creates a much larger ornament than using the smaller ones. And all we have to do is just alternate between each color. So the cool thing about this ornament ball is that you can do it in whatever color scheme you would like. There are so many different colored ornaments out there and so many different choices and selections. And you can also be using unusual shapes as well. So I'm just alternating so we have somewhat of a pattern. But if you're using the smaller ones, it doesn't really make a huge difference. And another thing that I did is I actually just poked some holes into it. So what I did is I just took the ornaments and poked them throughout. That way we have our guideline and we don't have to worry about doing it as we add each ornament. So now what we can do is we can come back in with our next layer. And again, like I said, don't worry about any of the, the gaps at this point in time because we are going to come back in with some extra little ornaments. We have one final ornament left to add, but it's not going to fit perfectly in between. So we are going to need to add an artificial stem. And you can also do this to every single one. We actually showed that in the last video we did last year for Home Talk. So we're going to just let that sit for a minute or two while it hardens up, and then we'll poke that right into the styrofoam. Here's the little ornaments that I showed you guys in the beginning, and those are actually the smaller ones that we used for the entire ball last time. And now we're going to use those to fill any of the uh, little gaps that we have in between the ornament. So go throughout each and every little section and add the ornaments where it's necessary. And it really depends on each and every ornament that you make because uh, sometimes it's going to require more and sometimes it's going to require a little bit less. And if there's glue strings, you can always pull them off after they've hardened. Now I just have a little length of wire and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold that so that we create a U or a pin. You could also use a floral pin for this if you choose. Then just snip them slightly at an angle. We have some wire here today, and you can find this wire available at nickseasonaldecor.com. What we're going to do is we're going to create a little knot. So we're going to tie it off. We want to tie it a couple of times to make sure. Pull it really tight, make sure it's not going anywhere. Take your scissors, snip off an excess. Cut yourself a nice long wire to be able to hang it from, you know, a tree, a shepherd's hook, a lamppost. And the question I get always asked, and I'm going to cover that real quick, is when I tie this, I like to have a single string instead of a loop. So what I do is I just tie this to the branch. So imagine that's a tree branch, I just tie it right on. And if I choose to move it elsewhere, all I have to do is just snip off that wire and attach it somewhere else. So now that we have our little pin, we're going to really close that up. We don't need it super wide. Dip it in our glue skillet. And find a little opening. Make sure it goes into the styrofoam, and there you go. So then you have a nice long wire to hang it. You can also place this on a pole and create a topiary, but now let's see what this looks like hanging up from my tree. Here is how the hanging ball turned out. I absolutely love it. We kept it in a traditional color scheme, which just screams Christmas to me. So we used the golds, the reds, and the greens. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video inspired you. I'm Nick Kretikos of Nick's Seasonal Decor, and you're watching me on Home Talk. Bye, everyone. So what we have here is a 10 to 15 inch work form. So once you take the mesh out of the plastic, this is what it looks like. What we have underneath this is a self-healing mat. We are going to be cutting our pieces about 18 inches or so. You know, with such a small wreath, one roll of mesh will do the trick for the entire design. So we'll just take our cutter. This is a rotary cutter. Make sure you have a sharp blade. And this has a symbiotic relationship with your mat. You can't use this without it or else you'll just dull the blade over time. So just one quick clean cut. And what happens when you do that is it prevents any fraying. So as you can see on the edge of this mesh, there's no fraying. So cut all of your pieces in advance to make your life a little bit easier. And then what I always make sure to do is I open up the twist, uh, twist tie. So this frame is a little wonky. Uh, the twist ties aren't perfect and that's because I've used this for three different flowers. So I've used this for spring, I've used this for fall, and now we're using it for Christmas. So what you're going to need to do is create essentially a curl. I call this the cannoli method because it's not going to be a perfect curl. So just take your, your mesh, kind of put it in at a slant, and then you're just going to twist it secure. So with a smaller frame, I like these curls to be a little bit tighter. 
like that. So now you have kind of the leaf edge. And this is something that we wouldn't do with regular deco mesh. This is something that I would only, or deco mesh wreath. This is something that I would only do with the flower technique. You can also just lie your mesh flat. We're gonna need two pieces in each frame. So you can just lie it flat and then just curl it up at an angle. Then take your two pieces, pinch them together, and then place them around the perimeter. So you're gonna wanna make sure to just place these around the outside edge. And the more you add, the more it's gonna simulate a flower. So we're gonna kind of discuss the inside and what you can do with that later on. But there's so many different possibilities. And our final two pieces. So now it's time for the same exact process, just with our red mesh. So you can also make this as a white poinsettia. I think that would be very pretty if you did white with maybe a dark green leaf and then, you know, champagne colored ornaments instead of a super bright gold or a super bright red. You know, so many different styles to match your home. So we're just taking these. There's only five twists on the inside. And it's starting to take shape. Okay, now we're good to go. So like I said earlier, you can place a flower center inside. You can find them at any craft store. Uh, you can also be using ornaments, which we're going to do, and I'm just going to show you guys that now. I think we're going to use gold. So something new that we have in stock is ornaments. So here we have these gold. I believe these are 80 millimeter ornaments. We have them in the mat. We have them in all sorts of styles, but the two I have chosen for today's project is the shine and the mat, and I think that's going to be a great combo. So to secure these into our wreath, I'm just going to use our glue skillet. So I'm just going to apply a generous amount of hot glue and stick it to the mesh. So once we kind of build up a nice base, we can take the rest of them and work them throughout. You might have to hold them for a second or two until you work in some more. So now we'll take one final matte ornament and I'm just using a little scrap stem to apply some hot glue around the edges, that way it stays in place. And this is gonna be our finishing touch. So you can actually come back in with what is known as vase filler um, to kind of fill in the little cracks. From a distance, you don't even notice anything in between. So I'm more than you know happy just leaving it like so. So we'll just secure that right in the middle. And I waited to do that until uh, the rest of the ornaments have hardened up. So now this wreath is complete. So now let's hang it up and show you the finished reveal. Okay, and here's the finished poinsettia. So very economical. And like I said, Deco Mesh comes in a wide assortment of colors, styles, price points, and textures. So feel free to choose whatever style you would like. We finished it off with, uh, I think, Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven ornaments. And we used one roll of deco mesh of each color, both the lime green as well as the dark red. And we still have enough to at least start another uh, deco mesh wreath, if not finish another one. So I absolutely love it just for its simplicity. No bow, no sign, just a beautiful flower. So thank you all so very much for watching. This is Nick Kretikos of Nick's Seasonal Decor, and you're watching me on Home Talk. Bye, everyone.